So welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to cover, let's say, three topics um, that I feel would be beneficial as just information to put out there. Uh, in no way, shape, or form is this financial advice, but more of my experience and things that I actually uh, have experienced firsthand and have gone through and wishing that I would have known there was other options, other resources, besides just the ones that I was given. When I was PCSing from Cuba, a little bit before that, I knew that I was going to be deploying. So with the money that I had saved and the money that I was <clears throat> potentially going to be making um, and saving, I knew that I needed to figure out some way of using this money that I saved and money that was going to be coming in as well as some type of investment. And obviously, whenever you're growing up, your parents are always telling you, uh, save, save your money, put your money in a savings account, in a CD, things like that and let the bank, you know, make the money for you. Um, I realized the interest amount that it was occurring and the money that it was gaining was very, very little, like literally cents per month that it was getting. So uh, uh, once I realized that, I, I knew that I needed to do something else with that money. And um, luckily now, I see there's a lot more options and if you are you know on social media here on YouTube uh, also throughout uh, even Google News all like the news is talking about cryptocurrency stocks and the reason being is because it's, it's becoming more of a um, consumer or easier for consumers to invest in stocks now invest in cryptocurrencies and things like that all of that is very risky because the market can fall, the market can crash. Companies that you invest in, they don't perform what you expect them to and things like that. <clears throat> but I do think and I do feel and I have experienced more return in my money being in the market, my money being in crypto, than my money sitting at a bank. For the bank to do exactly what I'm doing, just actually getting more of the money back from it. <clears throat> at the time, I thought it was a lot of money um, and it was a lot more money than what I had ever been used to having uh, in my savings account and checking account <clears throat> and I also knew that having all that money in one spot was not a good was not a good choice so I reached out to a financial advisor luckily uh, the military has a lot of financial advisors and a lot of financial counselors um, and a lot of help in the financial department that uh, either you can get sent through to go through classes or to actually talk to professionals and things like that. One of the guys that I talked to while I was stationed in Cuba um, held me out a lot and gave me some, some ideas and some direction. And some things that he told me was, um, first he asked me what my credit score was. And at the time, my credit score was literally I wouldn't say it was zero, but it was literally like nothing. Um, I did not did not have anything establishing my, my credit score. Um, I did not focus on establishing or building my credit score. Uh, I realized that I needed to establish my, my credit and I needed to build my credit. The ways that I did this, or the first establishment of my credit was a shared savings loan. I went into the bank uh, at the time Navy Fed went into the bank and I told them that I wanted a thousand dollar loan. I was like, I'd like to come get a thousand dollar loan for 12 months, please. They started writing everything up, drafting everything up, about to get it approved. And then they looked at my account and they're like, why do you, why are you getting this loan? So then I told them I'm getting this loan for 12 months to impact my credit and my credit score to start building it. And then that's when the lady told me, uh, you don't need this loan because the interest is really high and it's not gonna be the same return. So I got a shared savings loan and the shared savings loan in 12 months only cost me $12 or about $14 to borrow $1,000. The difference in the shared savings loan is it opens up its own loan account 
going to your uh, your checking account. And each month, it pays itself back whatever the increments are um, over the 12 month period, 30 something dollars or something like that. But it pays itself back every single month. And I never touched it, never really dealt with it, never did anything with it because the checking account automatically each month would be deducted and paying that thousand dollar loan back in 12 months. The reason why you want a minimum of 12 months is because it gives you um, length of, of credit. It establishes your your length of, of credit, which uh, you want something to be open from like pretty much like a credit credit card. Even if you don't use a credit card, you want to leave it open because it shows that your line of credit started whenever that credit card was opened up. Not that you're using it, but that the, the, the years and months of credit line started way back when. Months passed and my credit score started jumping. My credit score went up. And again, I had no, no, other, no other debt except for that one shared savings loan, which is $1,000. Um, it was out of paying itself every single month, so no issues there. And um, I knew that there was other ways of speaking to the financial advisor. There's other ways of impacting my credit score, a credit card. So then I looked at getting credit cards. Uh, pretty much every credit card institution at the time of me applying for them started to de um, re reject my applications because uh, my credit had not been established yet. It wasn't because my credit was good or bad, I just had no credit established. So luckily I came across Capital One um, and they have a a repairing credit or building credit card. And it's pretty much a deposit card. Uh, to open it up, it's either $50, or $100, or 150 at the time. I put, I think, $100 in. And for the first couple months, the only limit or the only balance that you have that you can spend is the $100 that you put as a deposit. Once they see that you are actively using your, your card, paying your card back each month, then they increase your, your limit, and I think it was either $500 or $700. What I would normally do is grab something to, to eat or buy gas, and then I would pay 100% of that card off every single month. Obviously, this kind of credit card, the interest is very high because you're at a more, to the company, you're more of a risk of not paying it or, um, you know, you have an established credit or you have really bad credit. So, to to them, you're a high liability. So, your interest is going to be higher, but you don't have to worry about the interest if you're paying your card off 100% of the time. Paying the card off along with that shared savings loan and my credit score went up tremendously and uh, because of that my credit score went up tremendously because of me paying that off 100% every single month and I wasn't maxing out that credit card I was only spending about $30 a month or less and just paying it off and still to this day um, I still live by the rule if I can't afford it then I'm not going to put it on the credit card to make payments because of that interest if I can't afford it Nine times out of ten, I don't need it at that time. Or uh, look at other avenues and figure out how I can get it. Typically on the credit card is going to be things that you're already going to be paying every single month. Like your, 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 your monthly bills, if you can put those onto the credit card. Things that you know 100% that have to be paid every single month that you're going to pay anyways. Um, gas, groceries, things like that. Now, whenever you have random things that pop up, going out to eat and this kind of stuff, uh, you have to be very cautious because that's when you get caught up with spending more than your means. So spending out of your means. And that's where a lot of people get in trouble with using credit cards because they spend way more money than they have and they think that little bit of interest um, is okay to, to recoup whenever they're going to make the payments in a couple months. But the problem is, is every single month you're tacking on more interest. So. Um, making the payments 100% of the time, hands down. If you can't, don't use a credit card. This leads me to the topic of investments. So investments uh, overall is just your money making money, right? So I have a few different avenues right now that uh, I use to invest and that I use to try and maximize the growth of my money that I already am making. 
to make more more money and a couple of things I've gotten involved with the past handful of months are uh, the trading platforms and getting into the cryptocurrencies uh, yes it's very 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 risky very volatile as they say but um, overall the returns and the gains that are made in a short period of time um, are tremendous in comparison to what I have given the banks over the few past years and kind of still give the banks to, to, to this day. Obviously, I don't have all of my money wrapped up into, into crypto, all the money into stocks, but I do have a good amount of what I call entertainment money. So with me, I have pretty much split up my savings. So I have majority of my savings in the savings account. And then the other part of my savings, I consider that the entertainment funds. So the entertainment fund is away from my actual money. It's away from my uh, emergency fund. And it is solely on if I want to buy a camera. That's, that's where the funds come from. If I want to... Um, buy clothes if I want to do that kind of stuff that's where those funds come from and now instead of me buying those kind of things I spend that to investments of uh, those investment platforms for stocks cryptocurrencies and things like that hopefully over time um, that little bit that I put towards there will have a big return is what we're all hoping for also, keeping up with a lot of the stocks and a lot of the crypto exchanges, that kind of stuff, it keeps you in the loop of a lot of um, recent events, uh, world history, local history, local events, local news, and things like that. So it's really good. Um, it's also a good way of learning that that part of, of life, you know? One thing I have found out, financial advisors do not really put you into risky situations. The ones that I have came across, um, they don't put you in a lot of risky situations. They try to keep in a lot of safe zones, and that's good, but whenever you're young, and not saying you have a lot of money, but when you have a little bit of extra money that you can put into riskier situations, <clears throat> hopefully for a bigger return. Even like purchasing a house, purchasing a car, hoping to flip it, or hoping that a couple years that... Um, it's actual investment and when you sell it you can make more or not lose money from it so even that is very very risky but a lot of times uh, in those types of assets they don't recommend or don't even really talk talk about doing it so I would just say just know overall that you have other options besides just throwing your money into C CDs into uh, savings accounts and letting them build up by the money you're putting in there. There's a lot of other avenues, a lot of other resources that um, your money can go into. And that is on you to decide uh, what direction you want to go, what you trust, what you don't trust, and how much risk you're willing to, to, to put. So uh, I would say just keep those kind of things in mind. And uh, this is something recently that I've been kind of... Uh, it's been gaining more of my uh, attention and I've been doing more uh, research and more thinking and more investing in so if this is something that you're interested in or something that you already really uh, invested in uh, leave some comments down below some people that are watching the video it can help them it can help me and uh, yeah these videos as you see on this channel um, can go from military life fitness to financial stuff to meal prepping my life is kind of I wouldn't say all over the place but it's just a normal life and it's not just one straight direction one straight Avenue and you know you have to expand your portfolio in life and in investments and in um, financial choices so Hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of video, this kind of content. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see other videos when I come out with them. But I've been trying to make this kind of video just to go over some of my experiences. And like I said from the beginning, this is not financial advice. Just some things that I went into. And overall, if you take anything from this video, just know that you have other options than putting money in a bank, in a savings account. And... 30 years down the line, it gains a little bit of money. And always live below your means. Always live below your means. But anyways, um, that would be it for this video. I'm going to wrap it up here. And uh, 
give it a like, comment, and the channel is growing. Slowly but surely, it is growing, so make sure that you are subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.